Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Graham and Sybil podcast with me, Georgia. On today's episode, we're going to be rejoined by Peter Seymour, who's going to give us a more up-to-date insight into the impact of the ongoing pandemic on the hospitality, tourism, and leisure sectors in Scotland. I'm sure we can all agree this is a very topical subject. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the Graham and Sybil podcast. Welcome to the Graham and Soul podcast. We are joined today again by Peter Seymour, who is an associate and head of hotel and leisure at Graham and Soul. Good morning, Peter. How are you? I'm good and well, Georgia. How are you? Good. Yeah. Are you enjoying the snow? <laughs> yes. Thanks. The kids are loving, the kids are loving snowboard, uh, snow, um, not snowboarding. Got a wish. Uh, <laughs> no, the kids are loving sledging down the hills. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I liked it for a day and now I'm like, you can go again. So... <laughs> Um, so last time we caught up about the effect of the pandemic on the hospitality and tourism and leisure sectors. Um, what has been happening since we last spoke? Well, um, obviously, the country's been going in and out of lockdowns to try and suppress the virus as required. And largely, um, I would suggest the sector or my sector has, has been fully supportive of this. Um, we've uh, sort of understanding got through phase three uh, or wave three of the virus and it looks like um, we're heading out of lockdown in in March or April of this year but as things stand at the moment we are still fully locked down um, and businesses are required by the government to be shut. And you've produced various articles recently in terms of business mothballing and hibernation what exactly do these terms mean and could you summarize them for us a little bit? Certainly. Um, what, what I meant by mothballing and, and hibernation is um, a process where one can shut down one's business um, temporarily um, to mitigate and, and reduce ongoing expenditure to the bare minimum, which allows an, a, a business owner to understand the fixed cost of being closed and therefore what liability he needs to cover. Uh, And this can range from uh, a few thousand pounds a month um, to tens or or even hundreds of thousands of pounds a month, depending on the size of the organization in question. Um, We have some of my hotel clients are incurring costs of up to 10 grand uh, um, just for being shut. So it it, it can vary. But the idea is that you, you, you shut down as much as possible to allow you to start again very rapidly but mitigate any losses during the period when you cannot trade. And obviously, as you were saying there, the hotel and leisure sector has been affected um, quite badly. What relief has been made available to hotel and leisure properties given the latest lockdown? Um, There is a very confused message out in the market about what relief um, is available to the sector. Um, Hearsay evidence suggests that a lot of operators are not receiving the grant funding that is being promised by Westminster. Um, But um, the Scottish Government did uh, this week release several new grants and aid packages which have been very targeted. So there's a one for B&Bs, there's a different one for self-catering, there's a different one if you're an events-based business, um, and there's uh, a, a, an improvement um, of a support fund um, from originally 60 million up to 120 million announced on the 10th of February, um, which is going to be um, fed through to hospitality businesses by their local councils. Um, we would urge everybody to get in touch with your local council just to see if you're eligible for that particular grant or fund. Um, and to apply, um, the funds range from 2,000 to 3,000 um, pounds uh, either per month or a one-off payment, um, which can be considerably larger depending on the sector. For instance, uh, the events-based businesses can have a 10,000 pound grant as a one-off payment. So it, 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 I think the Scottish Government are trying to be very targeted, perhaps too much so, um, one might argue. Um, and overcomplicating matters. Um, everybody is in dire straits right now with no income coming through their businesses and they need support and it needs to be released immediately rather than trying to, to overcomplicate it. 
Absolutely. And do you, so do you think that these relief packages are going to make a difference or do you have any other advice? Um, uh, I think the, it, it will make a difference to some smaller operators. Absolutely. Um, if you have a low income, a low turnover, um, or a smaller sized entity, um, then yes, every, every penny counts and 3000 pounds, uh, may well just see you through until we can open and trade again. Um, if you're a hotel and you're being offered 3000 pounds a month and it costs you 10,000 pounds a month to stay shut, um, then, you know, there will be a point in time when, um, this relief is not enough and the, the, the pockets of the operator um, or, or their willingness to incur further debt to survive will come to an end. Um, thankfully, we haven't seen that yet, um, but I think it is coming. And if we don't uh, or cannot be open and trade soon, um, then I think there will be um, a flurry of uh, people that unfortunately come to the end of what they feel they can manage and cope with, um, which will be unfortunate. Um, and we hope it's not too widespread. I know it's a shame. It's such an uncertain time. Um, in terms of you, are you currently marketing anything of interest that you could tell us about today? Uh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I mean, we've got some wonderful instructions across the whole of Scotland. And um, thankfully, um, we are seeing interest from a range of um, people, or, or it, it, certainly in our most rural and um, tourist-based operations. Um, but we are also seeing interest in um, unique opportunities that we have in city centre locations, which I think is a great relief because city centre locations have been hurt uh, the worst by this pandemic, and their route to recovery is certainly the most uncertain. Um, we're not sure yet what the city centre locations are going to look like over the next 12 months, whereas we're pretty sure there's going to be a very strong staycation market for tourist based hotels in rural areas, um, especially ones in idyllic locations or historically strong tourist um, locations. So that's a, a, a significant um, positive, and we are seeing some cash rich individuals. Um, offering significant sums and almost at pre-COVID levels for the right assets out there. Um, so there's a, there's a sense of resilience within the sector that I'm encouraged by. Um, and I think once we see um, lockdown eased and we were able to open and trade, I've certainly got a number of in, um, deals ongoing that will settle and finalize and hopefully be able to give a sort of confidence to the market. That's great. I'm glad to hear there's some positive things going on. Um, well, I think that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for your time today. If you have any other questions or would like to find out more, please go to www.g-s.co.uk and you can also check out our other podcasts on the Graham and Sybil YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today and stay safe. <laughs>